<sighs> okay. All right. I have figured it out. So, welcome, 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 welcome to this live session. This is really an impromptu live session. Bear with me here. I am lighting some Palo Santo. And I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome. Welcome to this live session. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a twin flame discussion here. And I'm going to try and keep this. This is going to be, we, uh, we're going to call this a little bit of twin flame story time. Um, and this one might be a little bit of an extended video. I'm being all self-conscious about my hair right now. But anyway, this is my, this is going to be a little bit of a longer video. Um, and I'm going to, and this is going to be story time. There's something that is going on within the collective, I want to say, um, because a number of you uh, have expressed that you're feeling something similar. Um, but ultimately, this is something that I'm going through and I'm experiencing on the journey right now. And I really feel like it's important for this to be discussed for the, uh, for on behalf of the collective for the collective, because there is a very um, important message in it mainly for the Divine Feminine, or those of us that, that are on this journey that resonate with the energies of the Divine Feminine. Um, <laughs> uh, so, my intention is to um, have this story time and explain this stuff to you, and then I'm going to be uploading this to YouTube, because here on Instagram, this is only going to be up for like 24 hours. And this is something that really needs to be discussed. This is something that is very important for the collective right now. Um, so for those of you that are watching this on YouTube um, after the fact, thank you for tuning in. Um, and yeah, let's just get down to business. So there is an energy in... Well, okay, I'm sorry. Before I go further, I'm going to tell the story and I'm going to explain what my experience is and how this is relating to the Twin Flame journey and the current energies between the Twin Flames right now. Um, and um, then if we have time, I'm going to pull some cards because I want to do a little bit of a card pull to look at where the Divine Masculine energies are and where the Divine Feminine energies are. Um, and there's actually a lot to talk about and this is kind of an effort for in, of me to... Um, go live a little bit more here, here on Instagram, but also to, to do more than just card readings and actually really talk about the journey and what the journey is and all of that good stuff. Um, because there, I think there really needs to be much more than that rather than just all of these, you know, these card readings and blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. Not to say that that's not to devalue any of that, but, um, especially for those of us like myself that are on this journey that are kind of leading the way for a lot of people. Um, which for me is a part of the journey. Um, it's really more important to really discuss the energies and, 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 and talk about it, okay? So, story time. We're going to start with that. Um, I, ha I, I took some time before I got into this session to meditate, um, mainly because, you know, I, I wanted to clear the air, I or I, at least I wanted to clear my mind, make sure that I was balanced and secure. Also, I, I felt like I needed to take a nap. So I was like, all right, cool. Oh, and I had just redone my nails, so I needed some time. <laughs> I needed some time to let my nails dry, and I was like, I kind of want to take a nap anyway. But So I was in this meditation, and I had a vision. I had a vision. Um... That was that is really really important, and I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I'm really quite nervous about sharing this right now, just because it's really it's really heavy, it's really intense, and it's pretty personal. I'm not gonna get into like crazy details about like my journey and everything, but I am going to discuss a little bit of what this is. Um, but what I want to start with is what has happened for me over the last few days. And then we're going to get into the meditation or the vision that I had in the meditation because it's directly related. So my twin and I crossed paths um, a, a few days ago. And it was a situation in which I chose to be in that area. I chose to be there in so that, you know, we could cross paths and potentially interact with each other. However, my choice to be there was purely 100% um, synchronistic. 
or at least what led me to make that choice to be there. Because um, if for those of you that follow me he, here on Instagram, you have seen the posts that I've been putting up lately, particularly since Christmas Eve of 2019. And for those of you that are watching here on YouTube that are new to me or don't know of my Instagram page, I highly recommend that you check me out there. Um, you can find the link to my page in the description box, but my channel or my page is called divine at divine underscore conversations. Anyway, on Christmas Eve, I posted a, a letter, a message to my twin flame. And that was something that it took a long time for me to get to. Over the year of 2019, I was dealing with a lot of resentment, a lot of anger, a lot of pain, very much in a victim mentality, even though a lot of what, was ha what, has hap what had happened or what I was dealing with was pretty fucking shitty. <laughs> Not, don't get like totally fucking shitty, but also I, I have to take a certain level of responsibility for it because ultimately what happened was kind of a direct result of my own actions in terms of you know, the twin flame journey and what was going on between me and my twin flame or this per okay, this person that I consider to be my twin flame. Um, there were a lot of other people involved, don't get me wrong, but ultimately it was really kind of like a direct, a, a direct um, reaction to what, to how I was reacting and what I was doing in terms of the situation. Now, when it comes to that, I was being guided in that way to take certain actions, to make certain moves, to say certain things, to interact with him in certain ways. In hindsight, I will say that it was all in service of the mission, all in service of the situation, of uh, the journey, and the healing that has come from that. But it took me all of, damn near all of 2019, to heal from that, to get over that. And there was, it was a point where I even stopped doing Twin Flame readings early on in 2019 on my YouTube channel because I was trying so hard to divorce myself from the situation, to remove myself from the, the journey and, and everything that it stood for, whatnot, whatever. I was literally trying to push it away. I had basically turned into the runner and I was very angry. And what was making me even more angry was the fact that I was doing everything that I could to remove myself from the situation. And yet I still kept getting the synchronicities. I still kept getting the telepathic messages over and over and over again. And it was ridiculous. It was a situation in which I was like, okay, look, I understand that he told me certain things and so I viewed certain things in the three dimensional world or in the three dimensional realm that were in direct opposition to what I was feeling, hearing and experiencing internally and spiritually. And I know those of us that lead and, and guide here on, in this situation in terms of the twin flame journey, we tell you all the time, don't pay attention to the 3D because that is not necessarily the truth. The real truth is within. The real truth is within the fifth dimension. And, the, and this journey is a process of bringing that fifth dimensional relationship into uh, physical manifestation here on earth. But here it, in my, in my, like an over, over the year of 2019, I fell out of that. And I chose to, to, to go in a direction that was trying to remove myself from the twin flame journey, even though I knew that wasn't possible and spirit wasn't going to allow me to do that. It's just, I mean, it's not, okay, so fine. So over the year of 2019, I went through this and it was right up, it was right at the holiday season that I really started to break. Um, I, and I really started, to, I started to experience a ton of synchronicities that just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And I had been, I had been experiencing the synchronicities all, all the time. Mainly I experience a lot in the form of numbers, um, and all that good stuff, but um, my twin's name is a synchronicity that I just can't get away from. Whether it is them saying it to me in my head, like I would be sitting here doing morning coffee in the morning or doing any sort of reading and kind of wondering in, in the back of my mind, I was like, hmm, I wonder who this is for. And they would say in my head, my guides would say, they would say his name. And it's like, what are you guys, why are you telling me this? Like, why do I need to know about any of this? I mean, it's over. We're not, I, I learned that lesson. I'm moving on. Why do you keep 
still keep bringing this up, but that was me being in denial. Um, but okay, so holiday season came and things really started to ramp up. And I started to receive synchronicities in which were like he himself was popping up in places like say on my Facebook feed that I, it should like, why is this, you know what I mean? Like we're not even connected there. Why would it like literally he would pop up there and it's like, uh, okay, all right, spirit. So what's the deal? And so then that led me to finally get to the point where I had to admit, I had no choice but to admit to myself that I still love him, that I still want to be with him. Um, and that is what led me to write that post um, to him. So if you're not familiar with it, or if you're watching this later on, on, on YouTube, go check out my Instagram page. It is, um, it, it's, the, it's a picture of two candles, one white, one black, the white candle is the feminine candle and the, and the feminine candle is like kissing the, 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 the black or masculine uh, candle on what I guess would be the cheek. Um, and I wrote a whole thing to that or to him on that. Okay. Then that led me to a number of other posts in which I was being honest. I was being truthful. I was sharing my, my feelings. I was, I was putting it out there. I was speaking my truth. Okay. So finally, the, the synchronicities ramped up to the point where I was notified of something, a, a circumstance or a situation in which I knew our paths would cross. And it was at that point that I actually got that notification in a way that was extremely unexpected and lo uh, logically speaking, shouldn't have even ha shouldn't have even have happened. But it was at that point that I said, okay, maybe I should really think about doing this. Maybe I should really go. And upon the guidance of spirit, I decided that I was going to go. So I did. And it turned out to be a good situation. Um, we didn't actually speak. However, we did make contact with each other. There was a little bit of an, an energy of kind of clearing the air a little bit, but we, again, we didn't actually speak. And I actually left the, the situation or I left the environment before we actually had a chance to speak. And that turned into, the next day, that turned into a complete and total panic attack because I was in an energy of, holy shit, he was right there. I had the chance to speak with him. I had the chance to kind of interact and I didn't take it. Now, I was going with the flow in that moment. And even when I left and was on my way home that night, I kept hearing myself say, Eric, you did the right thing. You did the right thing. But I, my ego was getting in the way. So the next day I have this panic attack and I end up not being able to do any work because I needed to just chill, okay? And I ended up having to work at like a night shift that night. I, I picked up a shift for someone. And so I cleared my energy. You know, I did what I needed to do. I did the self-care and it was great. It worked really well. I went to my night shift that night and I just kept getting bombarded with the energies. And, I, and mind you, by the time I had made it to that night shift, I was in a much better place energetically. But I just kept getting bombarded with the messages and the feelings and the and the and the thoughts like it, it, it just it wouldn't leave me alone. So by the time I got to the end of that shift, I had started slipping into a bit of a Queen of Swords energy. And um, I was kind of saying, like, I need I need you to just leave me alone. Uh, and I was speaking to him and I was speaking to spirit. I was like, guys, I need you to stop. OK, I need some space. And there was a message coming through saying, please don't leave me again. And it's like, look, I'm not going anywhere, but I need you all to just leave me alone about this right now because I need space. And it got, it just kind of slipped for, and I, I started slipping further and further into this queen of swords energy. And this is something that I was discussing in morning coffee today. Um, and if you're watching this after the fact, it was the morning coffee dated for January 30th. But I ended up getting so deep into the Queen of Swords energy that it started to become a little toxic and I got started to get a, quite a bit angry. Um, but there was a discussion that I was having telepathically, energetically, 
in which I kept hearing, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And that was one of those messages that bombarded me over the year of 2019. And I... I, I kept saying, I don't understand why you're apologizing so much. I mean, first of all, it doesn't even matter. Again, I don't care. I've, I've learned the lesson. I'm moving on. It's not like you ever have to see me again. Why do you keep saying this? And so then I started hearing it again at, at this night where I was having this Queen of Swords situation. And the, the, the message I was giving at that point in response to I'm so sorry was I don't care whether you're sorry or not. You being sorry, okay, well, you know what? I'm gonna sound like a little bit of an asshole or a bitch right now, but you meaning sorry or saying sorry means absolutely nothing. And it's not because I'm trying to be insensitive. It's not because I'm trying to be a bitch or an asshole. It's not because I'm trying to be mean and cut you. It's because technically, buddy, you being sorry means absolutely nothing. Instead of you wasting your energy and wasting your breath <laughs> telling me how sorry you are, what would be more meaningful is if you were to take action, is if you were to actually do something to show that you are actually sorry. So with that said, why do you keep saying this to me? I need you to leave me alone. I am not going anywhere. I'm staying right here. I'm not trying to leave you. I'm not trying to leave you energetically. And I'm definitely not trying to kick you out again like I was last year. But I need some space. I need you to leave me alone. And so I fell asleep in that energy, unfortunately. And I woke up the next day. And I was like, well, actually, no, I'm so sorry. Before I fell asleep, the conversation, the conversation ended. Before I fell asleep, all of a sudden I was like, oh my God, I don't think I love him anymore. Like it was literally a switch all of a sudden, like out of nowhere, literally a light flip, like a, like a, like a, light, like a light switch. The light just went boop, off. And I was like, I, I don't, I don't think I love him anymore. And that didn't make any sense to me. And it was a situation in which even the point, even to the point where there are, there are situations where I know that I can cross paths with, it, with him again and we can have another chance to maybe interact with each other. And, I, and, and just hours before, I was freaking out and having this panic attack where it's like, why didn't I just take the opportunity, the opportunity that was there before me before when I had it right there? full well knowing that there's going to be more opportunities in the future, so what am I freaking out about? And looking forward to those opportunities, and now all of a sudden, that light flip switches, I'm thinking, oh my, I'm feeling like, oh my God, I don't think I love him anymore, and I don't even think I wanna to go to the, the, I don't wanna cross paths like this anymore. But that didn't make sense. It was too simple. After everything that had happened, after that whole year of being so angry and resentful and wanting to disconnect from the situation and not being able to, now all of a sudden, I'm just disconnected and I don't love him anymore. And it, 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 it doesn't make any sense. So I fell asleep and I woke up the next morning and I still felt it. Like, I was still like, I don't, I don't want to see him. I don't think I want to cross paths. I don't think I want to interact with him. And quite frankly, I, I still feel like I don't love him. And it still didn't make sense. Like, like I was still kind of in that Queen of Swords energy, but the discernment of the Queen of Swords is what was really coming through at that point. And I was like, okay, wait, no, this is sus as hell. Like, this is suspect as hell. Like, something about this just doesn't feel right. Something about this just doesn't feel organic or natural or real or true. And so that's kind of why I was late with morning coffee this morning. And I, and I explained that during, on, in the video, but I needed to take some time to really make sure to meditate and to make sure and to clear my energy because I was even like trying to check in with my higher self and say, okay, what's going on here? And all of a sudden I'm hearing it's a hoax. It was a lie. He doesn't love you. It was all a hoax. What? That makes no sense. You spent... I've been hearing consistently for years, you tell me, higher self, 
that you claim to be right now. You were telling me consistently that he loves me. And now all of a sudden you want to tell me it was a lie and a hoax? That does not make sense. So it was, that, it was at that point that I was like, all right, I need to clear my energy. I need to meditate. I can't be doing morning coffee right now. I need to meditate. I need to clear my energy. I need to figure out what's going on. And I did a, uh, a violet flame meditation in which I was able to clear all that energy out. And I meditated for a little bit and I was ready to go. I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm ready to do morning coffee. And as I was getting up and getting ready, I was making my cup of tea and I was setting up my, 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 getting my things set. Um, that's when I started to realize, oh my God, this was a psychic attack. So for those of you that are out there that are kind of experiencing a similar in educa uh, education, Mmm, education. Yeah, this is a learning experience, you guys. But for those of you that are experiencing something similar, clear out your energy, okay? Do some meditation. Make sure you ground yourself. I highly recommend the violet flame meditation because that's really going to help. But I figured out that me slipping into that queen of swords energy was attracting negative entities around me that were feeding off of the anger and the kind of resentment that I was expressing and was then trying to egg me on to keep me in that energy. Okay. That's not the end of the story because now we're going to get into part two. So I wanted to come in and I wanted to have this discussion for, with you guys and I wanted to explain what this, what was going on here because I explained some of this during morning coffee and somebody posted that someone, I don't remember her name, but her channel is the Enchanted uh, Realm of Twin Flames, I believe it is. And she's someone that I used to watch years ago. Like when I, when I moved here and I, and I had just started doing like my own channel and all that. Um, but I stopped watching her and quite a few other people. But that was in, a, in an effort to disconnect from the Twin Flame journey. <laughs> Which again, obviously we can't really do. And I'm gonna ex I'm gonna get into this more. Sylvia, yes, thank you, thank you, um, Heart and Star. It's her name is Sylvia. It's the Enchanted Realm of Twin Flames is the name of her channel. Enchanted Realm, I believe it is. Anyway, you guys will find her. I'm sure she's very popular. She's very prominent. But I did stop watching her for a while. But somebody posted in a comment in Morning Coffee today that she had just done a channeled message yesterday, or um, if you're watching this after the fact, it was for January, it was posted January 29th of 2020, um, in which she described a very similar energy that I was speaking to in the pre-shuffle of Morning Coffee today. And I'll, I'll paraphrase a little bit, but I, actually, I don't really want to paraphrase because I would rather that you guys watch this video, watch the video. And um, for those of you that are here on Instagram, I highly recommend that you check this video out once I post it to YouTube, because when I post it to YouTube, I'm going to put a link to Sylvia's video in the description box of that, all right? So, so stay tuned. Once it gets up to YouTube, I'll share that link and you guys can see it because she is describing exactly what I am, well, not exactly, but something very similar to what I am experiencing right now and what a number of you are saying or you're experiencing and a number of other people are saying that they experienced, um, uh, that they mentioned it on the, on, in the comments of Morning Coffee. Um, but that led me to say, okay, obviously this is definitely something that's going on in the collective. So uh, we need to talk about this now. That leads me to the real message here. <laughs> that leads me to the real channeled message that I have for the collective here, especially, namely, the Divine Feminine Collective. So I decided before I got into this live session that I wanted to meditate to clear my mind, maybe take a little bit of a nap, give my nails a little bit of time to dry and just connect. And I invited any sort of information from spirit to come through during this meditation that I could share with you guys. And it happened. So what happened was it started with I saw a bull come forward. Now, I'm a Taurus in... Um, in Western astrology, I'm a Taurus sun. In Eastern astrology, I'm an Aries sun. Um, but in Western, I, I'm a Taurus, and I do kind of identify with Taurus energy quite a bit. Um, 
<laughs> me and my, I love doing my nails. I always have ever since I was a little kid. Anyway, um, and I'm not really quite sure why it was a bull that came forward. And uh, uh, initially it wasn't really a bull's face. It was like the snout of a bull. Um, ooh, but actually, you know what? That kind of resonates with the Taurus reading for February that is going to be go out this weekend. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, as of February 1st, the February readings for the Zodiac signs are going to be posted. And this actually does resonate with the Taurus reading. But anyway, it doesn't matter. I, I, I was interacting with the bull and I heard, I heard ride the bull. So I was like, okay. So I jumped on the bull's back and immediately the bull just started taking off and I was riding along, I was riding along and it was really kind of fun and I was just going with it. And all of a sudden I felt the vibration lift and me and the bull just started shooting up into the air, uh, into the sky, into whatnot, whatever. We just, we started, instead of going like linear, like say we were riding on land, we started going vertically, okay? And the vibration got higher and higher and higher and higher and all of a sudden everything just went kind of white and I saw, I felt myself in this presence of the divine feminine energy. I felt myself as a representation of the divine feminine. And for those of you that don't know, which you should, I guess you should by now, just by nature of the conversation we've been having, in terms of the twin flame journey, I, rep, I, I am the divine feminine here, okay? Um, and for those of you that are new to the journey, we're talking energy here. We're not talking gender, okay? So you can be, just like me, physically male and be a divine feminine. You can be female and be a divine masculine, okay? So the way that I was perceiving myself in this divine feminine energy is very similar to one of the memes that I posted a few days ago about um, when they say to, to be, not to be uh, eye candy, but to be soul food, but you're a multifaceted being, so you're eye candy, soul food, and a spiritual warrior priestess. I love that meme. But that, but the position that she was sitting there in, in is the exact same position in that energy, that vibration that I was felt, I felt myself in and I was giving off. And I, I, and everything was gold around me. I felt I was like, I was like uh, adorned in gold garb and I was sitting on a gold throne and every, and there was like a gold pathway ahead of me. It's like uh, everything was gold. And the energy that I was exhibiting in this solid, stable, firm, and secure divine feminine energy was this golden energy that was just being radiated, this golden unconditional love that was being radiated for everything and everyone, for I guess for all the world to see. And so I was in this meditation and I was in this vision and I was just basking in this energy. I was just feeling through it. It was beautiful. It was gorgeous. I loved everything about it. And then that's when my attention was pulled to my left and I saw there was a doorway that was open and there was this bright white, almost like fluorescent or I guess what could be colored or called ugly lights. There was this bright white light that was shining from that doorway with a little bit of green in there. And that's when I, that's where I saw the person that I, that is my twin flame that I, that I have this whole time, my spirit and my higher self has been saying is my twin flame. He was standing there in that doorway, making out with a bunch of women and he, as I was watching him, he turned and looked and noticed that I was watching him. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit weird because two things happened. First of all, egoically, I knew potentially what was coming next. So instead of allowing it to play out, my ego kind of got in the way and I kind of projected what I wanted to see happen. And that was him coming through that doorway alone closing the door, locking the door, kind of throwing away the key, but I also heard keep the key, and then coming and sitting down on the empty throne for the masculine right next to me. And I was wondering, why did I hear keep the key? And it was, and what I heard in terms of that was so that that doorway can be unlocked and those feminine energies can come out and enter into the realm and the space of being the divine feminines that they are as well. I wasn't trying to lock or block anybody out, okay? And unconditional love is inclusive for everyone and everything. <laughs> Um, but then that's not what really happened because then 
I recognized, okay, I think I'm just projecting here because I was trying to envision him sitting next to me and it just wasn't happening. So I went back and I allowed it to happen as it naturally would. And what happened? He closed the door. He stayed where he was and he closed the door. <laughs> and there I was sitting in my divine feminine essence and kind of heartbroken, but recognizing that I still have a mission and understanding that ultimately someone is going to align with me. And what I want to explain first, before I go any further, is part of being on this journey, whether you're a divine feminine or a divine masculine, is recognizing who you are, recognizing your place on this journey and embodying that regardless of the circumstances, regardless of whether or not your twin, your divine masculine or your divine feminine is there with you. We are not meant to do this alone. So ultimately, the universe is going to align us with the counterpart that will be a vibrational match or that will allow us to harmonize with each other and get this mission done. Being on a twin flame journey or being in the twin flame uh, on a twin flame mission is not about the romance. The twin flame journey is about sharing and spreading unconditional love throughout the world. We have come here so that we can be those examples of unconditional love, so that we can anchor unconditional love onto the planet as the planet makes this shift into fifth dimensional reality. The twin flame relationship is of fifth dimensional reality. And with that comes a mission. And that mission can be expressed in any way, shape, or form. In any way that is best for you or in any way that you have come to express that. It doesn't always look like being a, a healer or a card reader or a psychic or an intuitive, being a Reiki healer or a, 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 a yogi or a yoga master or, or any, like it could literally be anything. But the one common denominator is being of service. Why? Because fifth dimensional reality is a reality in which we are tasked to be of service to one another. The fifth dimension is the first place within the hierarchy of the dimensional system of the universe in which we experience Christ consciousness, aka unconditional love. And it is within that realm that we are to be of service to one another in whatever way we choose to, in whatever way that, exp that is best expressed for ourselves. So, wow, this is actually turning into a situation in which I could start discussing the, the, some ways that you can identify whether or not you're on a twin flame journey or not, but I don't know if I want to get into that yet. Um, that might be another topic for, other, for another live session, which I think would be really good because there's even more that I want to talk about here that I don't think I, I'm going to be able to get to. Um, and I have to keep an eye on my time because I have to go to work at a night shift. I've picked up another shift for someone. But anyway... Um, so, okay. So the vision continues from here. Now, as I was in sitting in this divine feminine energy and recognizing that there is a very real possibility that the person that I have been aligned or, or been in this energy of that I've been hearing is my twin flame and have been experiencing all these synchronicities around could potentially not align with me, could potentially to choose the, the, the path of free will that keeps him in the, in the energy that he's in, could choose to close the door on this and remain where he is. And there's an energy there that I've been expressing that needs to be held that is an energy of a boundary that's saying, well, look, ultimately, as long as I stay in my alignment, I'm good. 
I'm going to get that divine counterpart. I'm going to get what it is that I want. I'm going to get what it is that I'm looking for. And in the past, I have expressed it in a way where it's super nonchalant. It's like, look, bo look, buddy, I really don't give a, th I don't give a flying shit. You can do whatever the fuck you want. I don't care, buddy. I'm good here all on my own. But it's not really, in truth, it's not that nonchalant. That nonchalance, that brushing it off, is really kind of a defense mechanism. It is with a heavy heart that I sit here and say to you, especially if, especially if you're watching this, it is with a heavy heart that I sit here and say to you, Either this is going to happen with us, between us, or it's not. It is not something that I want. I would rather be with you than with anyone else. And please, if you are watching this, please understand that I'm not trying to put some plea. I'm not trying to beg you to, 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 to make this choice. Absolutely not. Ultimately, it is up to you. I'm leaving it up to you, and I'm leaving it up to the, to the universe. But it is with a he I'm saying it is with a heavy heart that the feminine, or in, in small cases, the masculine, if the masculine is the one that is sitting there on his throne first, waiting for the feminine, his feminine counterpart, to catch up or to get there too, Whomever it is, it is with a heavy heart that we sit here and say, it could be you or it might not be. Ultimately, what's really important here is the mission. What's really important here is embodying who we are and bringing this love and bringing this light to the world. So that's where the vision changed. And I was approached by the collective Divine Masculine. And I hear from the, 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 the collective of the divine, the divine Masculine quite frequently. And it is the Divine Masculine Collective that says to me so often that he loves me. Okay. So the collective of the Divine Masculine came to me in this vision, stood before me and said the name of the person that they've been saying all along. They said they are or he is. The person that you have been waiting for. And I kind of want to paraphrase it a little bit. And yes, his intention is to, for this to be heard too. But not only the person that I've been waiting for, but the person that I've been looking for. Because I had, I did, side note, I did have a dream about him back when I was in high school. I, I mean, I didn't see him exactly, but we kissed in this dream. And there was this, this overwhelming feeling of unconditional love. I say it's unconditional love now. Back then, I didn't know it was unconditional love, but I just knew it was the most intense feeling of love that I have ever experienced ever in my life. This was like in sophomore year of high school. And ever since then, I had been on a mission to find that person. I didn't see his face specifically, and I didn't get his name, but I had enough defining elements to him that allowed me to think that anyone that lined up with that was potentially this person that I had a dream about. It wasn't until I actually crossed path, paths with him in the physical that, and then things were going through and then I awoken, I, 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 I opened up to the twin flame journey because even when we first crossed paths, I, had, I was not even close to thinking about the twin flame journey. Maybe I had heard about it like every once or twice, but it really wasn't even something that was a part of my vocabulary. And then all of a sudden I learned about it and I was like, oh my God, this is what was happening. And then later on down the road, I was like, oh my God, that's right. I had that dream. So yes, this is kind of the person that I've been looking for all this time. But the Divine Masculine said to me, yes, he is the person that you've been waiting for. And he is the person that you have been looking for. But he needs to choose to step up to the plate. He needs to choose to take his seat, his rightful seat in the, on the throne next to you. But you need to continue to maintain the space the nurturing and loving and forgiving space for him to step into. You cannot close off to him. You cannot protect yourself in a way that closes him, closes yourself off to him to say, well, if you're not going to do this, then I'm going to choose for you. That's not your place. Your place is to hold the space and to hold your own in the circumstance. Ultimately, if he chooses not to step into the, to the role that he's destined for, someone else will take the space. Someone else will be aligned with you. And it's with that that I saw somebody step up and take the seat at the throne. But it was not him. 
it was someone with brown skin like mine. And this person that I've been hearing about so often is Caucasian. Is that absolutely what's gonna happen? I have no idea. Because even though I saw that, I still kept hearing this person is the person that you've been waiting for. It is his rightful place, but he has to choose to take it. So this is the message that I bring for you guys right now. The divine feminine is the one more times than not, is the one that's kind of leading the way here, is the one that awakens to this journey first. There are some rare cases in which the divine masculine awakens first. But, for the most part, it's the feminine. So, I speak to the feminine here. And masculine, if you're the one that's in this position too, just, just place it for yourself. But you need to be the guiding light. And even though we sit here, with heavy hearts, knowing, and I, <laughs> this is really heavy. Like, I, I almost am getting a little bit choked up. Um, I feel like I want to cry. But it's because of the possibility that someone else could align with this. It's entirely possible. We have free will. We have the right to choose. But that free will is one of two things. Going with the flow or resisting it. Ultimately, what's most important here is the mission. Not who you align with, but the mission. We need to make sure that unconditional love is anchored and sustained on the planet right now. Because we all need it. The planet needs it. Mother Earth, Mother Gaia needs this energy so she can make her transition back into fifth dimensional reality. That is why we're here. We came to help her do this. So yes, it's with heavy hearts that we feminines sit here and wait for our masculines to join us. And I say wait, uh, yes, we are kind of waiting but that doesn't mean that we're not serving our mission. That doesn't mean that we're not doing what it is that we need to do. That doesn't mean that we're not following through and being on the path and doing our light work. Okay? We're not putting our lives on hold until our masculines or our feminines come into the picture. Hell no. And also, we are not... <laughs> Shut up, heart and star. We are not to, or we are not, whole, uh, uh, we are whole beings, regardless of the fact that uh, the divine feminine and the divine masculine ultimately share a soul, right? But we are still whole be beings in and of ourselves. And see, okay, and, and now for those of you that are watching on YouTube later, um, I, I'm going to be commenting on the comments that people leave but it's not about waiting any i mean i mean you're someone is saying um i don't want to wait anymore i'm tired well it's not like you're waiting it's not like you're meant to wait it's not like you need to wait again you're not supposed to be putting your mission on hold but divine partnership is the key here and y you can't be in a third dimensional relationship and still work your mission. You can't. I tried to do that with my ex-husband that was right before all of this and it didn't work. There was, a, there was a level of integrity that was not there. And as the feminine, integrity is everything. So it's not even a situation in which you could be in a relationship with your twin flame or your divine masculine or your divine feminine and there's no sense of integrity. There's no sense of truth. There's no sense of honor. There's no sense of authenticity. That's not going to fly. You will not be able to effectively do your mission work if you're in that type of circumstance. So if you're going to have a partner, if you're going to have 
the Clyde to your Bonnie or the Bonnie to your Clyde, if you're going to have the sun to your moon or the moon to your sun, if you're, if you're going to have that partner in crime, it needs to be someone that aligns with you. And it, it needs to be someone that aligns with or harmonizes with the path. It's not like you two have to be going every step of the way together, but you need to be able to work together in some capacity. That's what we're meant to be doing. This was a lot. <laughs> and I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I was very nervous to, to do this. I'm very nervous to even post this on YouTube. I'm being very open and I'm sharing a lot of my story. And it's not because this, please understand, especially if you're watching this, this is not in an effort to get you to reply. This is not in an effort to get you to step up to the plate and show up and, and, and take your space on the throne. For anyone out there that's skeptical, this is not in an energy or an intention to get a reaction from the masculine. I am doing this because I am on this journey and I need to share this with you guys so that you can understand what's going, what's happening, so that you can understand what you're going through, so that I can bring these messages to you to help you on that journey. Okay? I am actually putting myself at risk of pushing him either even further away because of how open I am being. But check it out, you guys. I can't hide any longer. Now, keep in mind that I have no intentions of, uh, of revealing his identity unless he gives me the express permission to do so. So don't ask and don't expect me to reveal it in any way. And if you are watching this, don't worry. You have nothing to worry about there. But I am at running, putting myself at risk of pushing him even further away with how, with how open I am being about this. I mean, I just recently put the fact that I am a twin, I identify as a twin flame and the divine feminine in my bio on, here on Instagram, which is something I wanted to do when I first started this page, but I resisted that heavily. I can't resist that anymore. If I'm going to stand in my integrity, if I'm going to stand in my authenticity, then I have to be fully 100% honest about who I am and what my journey is. And I need to be willing to bring these messages to you guys because I am a leader. I am a guide. I am not trying to put myself on a pedestal. I am not a self-proclaimed leader. I'm not trying to stand on a soapbox. My life path number is nine, is a nine, goddammit. I was born for this. I can't escape it. I can't push it away. And I can't allow myself to be anything less. Because if I'm doing that, I am not serving my mission. So here I am, laying it all out there for you guys. <sighs> okay, so with all of that said, I have a little bit of time. So I want to, I want to uh, channel, I wanna pull some cards for the collective. And specifically, I want to look at where the Divine Masculine is right now. That's what I just heard. I heard that first. The Divine Masculine Collective. We're going to start there. And then I'm going to look into the Divine Feminine. Okay? But yeah, I love you guys too. I love you all so very much. I just want to check in with the comments here for a really quick second. Um, you are messy heart and star, but actually that's exactly why I love you. So don't you worry about it one bit. Okay. All right, cool. I mean, <laughs> can we schedule a, a divine feminine collective group cry slash meditation? You know, that's a funny, that's a funny topic. Um, but hi, Allie, but, um, I actually, many of, a lot of you have been asking if I'm going to like do any sort of guided meditations. I am looking into that. Um, that would be really cool, but actually we might want to have a, um, um, 
we might have, a, we might do a, a meditation at some point. I'm working, on, there's a bunch of stuff that I'm trying to work on for the channel. Okay, so let's get into this here. Um, I, I want to look at the current state of the Divine Masculine Collective. And I'm, keep in mind, understand that this is not in an energy to try and be nosy, all right? I'm not trying to be nosy. I want to bring guidance and understanding for you. So for those of you that are of the Divine Masculine Collective that are watching this, because I know there are some of you, okay? And it's, you're not the majority. Obviously, the majority it, for my channel and for many of the other channels that are out there, the majority is the feminine. But for the Divine Masculine, I'm going to talk to you right now. I want to get a current look at your energies, and I want to get some guidance for you. I want to get some understanding, some clarity. Please understand, guys, that I am not the type of reader that's trying to be nosy. I'm pulling these messages and these energies for you because I want to help you. I want to help you gain some clarity and some understanding about your journey and where it is you where you are right now and how you can better improve your situation. Okay? All right, Divine Masculine. So actually, I am using the, the, the decks that I use for my Twin Flame mirror reading. So for the Divine Masculine, I have the Tarot Apocalypsis deck here. All right? So let's where you, let's see where you are, Divine Masculine. Woo! Oh. Oh, oh, oh. The very first card is Justice. Okay. The Nine of Wands. The Page of Swords. Something else just flew out, but... Ah, ha! The Ace of Swords. Yes! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, wait, hold on. Damn, there is... Oh my god, there is so much coming out here. Okay. Wow! Okay. This is good. Overall energy for you, Divine Masculine. You have the Chariot. And I'm going to be completely 100% honest with you. This is a lot better than I thought it was going to be. This is a whole lot better than I thought it was going to be. Especially when the first card out was justice for you, Divine Masculine. I'm not going to lie. I cringed when I saw this come out. Because I was like, oh shit, well this can really go one of two ways, can't it? And the first thing I was kind of picking up on, and I guess this was coming from the place of the mindset, the conscious egoic mindset that I was in, in all of this emotion about being aware and and prepared for the fact that you know my own twin may not actually be the person that i align with ultimately um but the first thing i thought of was justice is coming through here and you might be left in the dust divine masculine but then a bunch of other things came out we have the ace of wands the ace of swords we have the page of wands and the page of swords we have the nine of wands but then we also have temperance and none other than the empress or in other words the divine feminine now some of you i i feel like masculine you're probably watching your feminine hard body right now and i feel like this is with intentions to make some sort of move maybe take some sort of action or communicate some sort of truth also, with the Page of Wands here, you have an energy of, yes, communication, sending a message, but you also have an energy of, in my opinion, as a reader, um, going through a self-re-identification process. And this is more surface level than it is um, internal, because I do see potentially the Page of Wands as like a minor arcana version of the Hermit, which is, the Hermit is that really deep soul searching, okay? But here on the surface, this is communicating about you re-identifying yourself. This is you, and sometimes the Page of Wands could be some sort of midlife crisis. If you're of that age, you know, it, it could kind of potentially represent that. But we have the Ace of Swords and the Ace of Wands. There is an energy of... Um, having some sort of truth or knowing some sort of truth and being inspired to move forward with it, especially, especially with the chariot here, okay? There is movement. So for the feminine out there, please be assured there is movement happening or intended upon within the masculine collective. Now, for the masculine here, Back to you guys. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm speaking directly to you, masculine. Okay, but you have temperance with the empress, and that's also with the nine of wands. Now, this is your divine feminine. Sure, it does could represent your divine feminine in the physical realm, and so because of that, we could see this as you 
persevering towards coming together with your divine feminine in the physical realm. But ultimately, you can't do that until you have that internal balance first. So that's what I'm seeing here. Ultimately, or initially for you, Divine Masculine, you're going through an energy of integrating with and balancing your, your own inner feminine energies. Because yes, we have two individuals, one embodies, uh, one, um, yes, one embodies more a dominant masculine energy, the other embodies dominant feminine energy. But ultimately, each individual and all human beings, whether you are on this twin flame journey or not, holds and embodies both masculine and feminine energies okay so divine masculine for you right now your part of the journey is to continue working on balancing and integrating your own inner feminine and i do want to say that you're working really hard at this with the nine of wands you're really persevering you could even be in an energy of holding some sort of boundaries between you and some other people or some circumstances that would get in the way of that balance between the masculine and the feminine energies within you. But I do want to say, I want to make this very, very clear, Divine Masculine. You cannot cut corners here. Feminine, I'll say that to you also. You cannot cut corners either. You have to have that balance of masculine and feminine energy within yourselves first before you can have that balance between your, your counterpart in the physical realm, period. I want to speak to, because something just came through, I want to speak to those masculines out there that might be afraid that their, their time is going to be up and they're going to miss an opportunity to align with their feminine, their divine feminine. And for the feminines out there that are kind of afraid that the divine masculine is, is whatever, the, the similar. For any of you that's afraid of that or feeling some sort of fear or doubt or whatnot surrounding that, as long as the individual is choosing to walk down the path, no matter how slow or fast they're going, as long as the individual is choosing to follow through with the steps that they need to take, the alignment will happen. It is only when the individual consistently refuses to do so, is not taking any steps whatsoever, that is when potentially someone else will be aligned. It's about the choice. It is about your conscious free will choice to either go with the flow or resist. Please, now please don't take my absolute word for it. I'm not trying to say I have all the answers here, but that is the, that is the information that's the channel that, just come, that has just come through. And so I wanted to share it with you. Okay? All right. So let's check on my time here. Um... All right, so what I want to do is I kind of, I want to get some advice for you now, and then we're going to move into the feminine energies, okay? So I'm going to use the Golden Universal Tarot here, and I just want to get some final guidance for you, Divine Masculine, um, in terms of this. And then we'll get into the feminine. Divine Masculine Collective... Or just some, I want to call this oracle guidance, but I'm using the tarot. All right, last shuffle here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now, uh, what bef masculine, before I go on going further, I do want to say that this justice card here is um, ultimate justice in terms of universal order, universal decree, or even like the soul contract that you have with your divine feminine. All right. Okay. So your closing guidance here from spirit, divine masculine. Yeah. Overall energy, overall energy is the eight of pentacles. Just do the work. Consistency is key. You don't have to get everything perfect. You don't have to get everything right. You don't, you, 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 you don't, you can make mistakes, divine masculine. And I feel like that's something that's really holding some, a lot of you back. And that's actually something that came through in morning coffee today. But you can make mistakes, 
You don't have to be perfect. Perfection is subjective, Divine Masculine. You don't have to be perfect. But as long as you are willing to learn, as long as you're willing to take the mistakes that you make, learn from it, and then apply what you learn moving forward, oh shit, I'm about to be cut off in 20 seconds, then you're fine, okay? Um, so I, I didn't know this was a thing, but I'm about to be cut off in 10 seconds. So I guess I'll be restarting the live session soon. Come back because I still have guidance for the divine masculine here and I want you to see it, yeah? Okay, I'll be right back, guys. Oh, well, hello. I had no idea that was a thing. Welcome to part two of, <laughs> of our live session. I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait a little bit. I'm gonna, hi, welcome back. Welcome back. Y'all, straight up. I had no idea that was a thing, y'all. Well, shit. Um, so I'm going to give it a little, I'm going to give it a few more. Yes, part two. Welcome to part two, guys. I'm going to give it a few more moments. I'm going to let a little more people get back in here. And then we're going to get on with the, the, the guidance, the guidance from spirit to, uh, for the divine masculine collective. And then we're going to look into the divine feminine energies. Okay. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys are enjoying this. Um, and for those of you that are watching this on YouTube after the fact, please just bear with us. Um, because I am doing this live on Instagram, but I hope this is helpful for you guys. I hope, you know, I, I, I like I said before, I'm really putting myself out here now. Oh, hey, Nilea. Oh, um, Nilea, I don't know if you were in on the first part, but this is part two. Um, um, I, if you guys don't know, I think many of you probably know of Nilea right now already, but if you don't know her, Nilea Guerrero, um, she's fantastic. Uh, she and I have been really vibing together. We've been doing a lot of readings back and forth for each other, but if you don't know of her, <laughs> That's okay. But if you don't know of her, check her out. She's fantastic. All right, guys. So I'm going to get back in. We have like 19, 20 people left are back in. That's what just, just like last time. So I'm going to get back into spirit's guidance for you, divine masculine. Okay. Um, but what I was saying was we started with the overall energy of the eight of pentacles. All that is needed here is consistency. All that is needed is that you are consistently working towards the goal. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get everything right. Okay? You can, in fact, make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes. You're a fucking human being, for God's sake. Okay? We're meant to make mistakes. The feminine, the divine, your divine feminine is going to make mistakes. Also, you don't have to be perfect, divine masculine. But what you do need to do is just do the work consistently choose oh thank you nylea you're welcome um consistently choose to do better and be better next time even if that's just in small increments you don't have to make huge leaps and bounds okay perfection is subjective divine masculine it is not necessary what else do you have here you have the Ten of Swords, the Page of Cups, and Judgment. Divine Masculine. The worst is behind you too. Or potentially the worst is going, is becoming, is about to be behind the two of you. Between, between you and your Divine Feminine in the physical realm. Okay? For the most part, I really feel like the worst... Hey, Julian! Julian, you're you're checking in on... You're getting in on the second half of our session here. This is part two. Um, and you guys, if you don't know of Julian, Julian Skywalker here on Instagram, check him out. He's a Vedic astrologer. He's freaking awesome. I, I mean, like, he's fantastic. You need to check him out. But anyway, back to you, Divine Masculine. It's time for you to understand that the worst is behind you. Start expressing yourself. There is love and union. You are being called to union. Judgment with the Four of Wands. The Four of Wands is the union card. That's the 1111. It's symbolic of Twin Flame Union. Ex oh, yes. Grace Jones. I am not perfect, but I'm perfect for you. Absolutely, 100%. I absolutely agree with that. 
It's time to put the past aside, Divine Masculine. It's time to put your differences aside and use this opportunity to share your emotions, to express yourself, to even start diving into your emotions. Okay? That is Spirit's guidance to you right now, Divine Masculine. All right? We love you. We all love you. Even though we can be real catty and real bitchy and blah, 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 and we curse your name and nah, fuck you, get out of here. We still love you. And one of the things that I experienced when I was in the, the, the last year, when I was really in all that bad energy, was the fact that under the surface, I was getting so angry. I was so pissed because no matter how hard I tried to divorce myself from the situation, I still loved that man. And that was making me angriest of all. It was what, like, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't, I wasn't this angry with my ex, my fucking ex-husband. The person, a person that dragged my ass through the karmic trenches. I wasn't this angry with him. Why? Because I wasn't in love with him. I'm not in love with him. I'm in love with my divine masculine. And the fact that I was trying so desperately to divorce myself from the situation, and yes, I am using the word divorce specifically, but I, I was trying so hard to remove myself or divorce myself from the situation, for, to forget about it, to say it's over, it's done, I never have to experience it again, I learned my lesson, blah, 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 and it still kept coming up. I was so angry because I loved him. I still love him. Do you get it, Divine Masculine? So if your Divine Feminine is really throwing a fit, it's probably because she loves you. Just saying. Because you're not going to throw a fit for someone that you don't love, right? Some Joe Schmo or, or like Susie down the street. You don't give a fuck what they think. <laughs> what? Please. I ain't, what? I'm not, I'm not even, I ain't, I ain't even checking for that. I ain't even pressed. I am not even pressed. Who is that again? Uh, what uh, what just happened? I wasn't even really paying attention. Like that. But the person that you love pisses you off to no end, don't they? Mm. Tells you something. <laughs> okay. That was you, Divine Masculine. Divine Feminine, it is your turn. So give me a second. Let me reset. And then we're going to get into... The feminine's energies here. Aw, that is so, that is so sweet, Heart and Star. And it's funny. I find that really sentimental. There are, uh, there are others of us, or there are other people out there that would look at that as really sick and twisted. But I want to say, for those of you that are, that are watching this on YouTube later on, Heart and Star said, he's the only one I want to text 17 times in a row when I'm candy flipping. I love him so much. And that is just like the cutest thing ever. <laughs> oh my God. See, but I get that humor. This is why we're friends, Heart and Star. This is why we're friends. Okay. That is for sure. They definitely know how to push those buttons. All right. Uh, give me a second, guys. I'm going to... I'm just clearing up the masculine's deck right here, and then we're gonna get into the feminine. Okay, all right, fine, that's enough. All right, cool. Let's get into this. All right, divine feminine, it's your it's your turn. It is your turn, honey boo boo chow. Hold on a second, really quick, because I am I gotta my computer keeps my computer is right in front of me, and it keeps um, going to sleep. I need to keep it open so I can keep an eye on my time because I gotta be at work soon. Okay, uh, candy flipping is. I believe candy flipping is when you do acid and ecstasy at the same time. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Anyway. Uh, okay. For the Divine Feminine Collective, where are you right now? We just want to look at where the Divine Feminine Collective is right now. And then we're going to get your guidance. Yeah, it's um, it's acid and and uh, uh, ecstasy. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. One more shuffle for the Divine Feminine Collective. Okay, here we go. LSD and MDMA. There you go. Yep, there it is. Okay. 
Here we go. For the Divine Feminine Collective, where are you right now? Okay. Oh, oh, <laughs> short and sweet, Divine Feminine. Yeah, oh. Okay, it's short and sweet. You have two cards and then you have the overall energy, but it is rippy. It is, it is, um, point blank. Queen of Wands with the Six of Cups. Overall energy is the Seven of Cups. So what does this mean? Divine Feminine, you are in fact calling in your soulmate. You are in fact calling in your ideal partner. The one that is going to harmonize with you. And I say harmonize specifically because it's not, at least the way I see it, it's not about aligning with someone that is a direct vibrational match with you in which like you align on every single aspect. I mean, you two are individual beings. You're going to have your differences, okay? You may compliment or you may compliment each other, but that doesn't mean you have to align exactly on everything. It's not even meant to be that way. But as long as you can stay in a, in a high vibration and harmonize with each other, then you've got yourself a match. Queen of Wands Six of Cups. I'm hearing she knows who her divine masculine is, but she also is aware. This is exactly, you guys, this is exactly what we were just talking about. This is exactly the story I just told you. But she is unaware of whether or not it's actually going to be him. Seven of Cups. It's up in the air. It's up in the air. Divine timing is at play here, sure. And she knows exactly what it is that she wants. And even as I'm saying this, my guides are saying to me right now, they're saying his name in my head. They're saying he is the one. I know this, but I don't I have, I have no idea what's going to happen. We don't have no idea. We don't have any idea what's going to happen, Divine Feminine. All we can do is stay in this alignment. Be this magnetic queen. Draw in the partner that is right. Don't focus on, and you know what? Actually, maybe this, this is kind of a good thing, Divine Feminine, having this illusion or confusion around you because it gives you an opportunity to not focus so much on one individual, which then allows you to not put more resistance into the situation. Because the more that you focus on, on it being one specific person and the more that you require, require it to be that one specific individual, the more you put resistance into the situation. Okay. All right. So now I wanna get your divine guidance from spirit here. Let me give this five shuffles. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. All right. Divine guidance from spirit for the divine feminine here. Okay. <gasps> Woo! Okay. First of all, um, a, a stack of uh, a few cards fell out, but only one card fell out face up. And that is the seven of pentacles. Ultimately, what this is saying here is what I and what I heard with this is you're going to get the rewards for the hard work that you've done well. You are going to receive the fruits of your labor. And just as I was hearing that message and I was about to say that, I looked at the bottom of the deck 
And looky here, girlfriend. The Ace of Pentacles. There it is. There is your harvest. There is the fruit of your labor. You are going to receive the divine partnership that you are meant for. You are going to receive the divine partnership that you are aligning with, is what I'm hearing. All you have to do is maintain your alignment. And that's literally the message that came through in Morning Coffee today. And if you're watching this later on on YouTube, it was for January 30th. Let's see what else came out for you here. Good God, it is what I thought it was. Shut up. This is beautiful. So I thought I saw the King of Cups in that stack that fell out. Sure enough. What? You feel like giving up? Steph, don't you dare give up. That's the point. Don't you dare give up. You are worth the perseverance. You are worth it. But the King of Cups, here he comes. Judgment with the Nine of Pentacles to the Ten of Pentacles. So Divine Feminine, you are here in this Nine of Pentacles energy. Judgment is, the, the angels, the universe is blowing this horn of judgment. You can kind of see this as the universe waking up your Divine Masculine or waking up this counterpart. And here's that Ace of Pentacles to complete your Ten with the King of Cups. The cards don't lie, you guys. Y'all watched me shuffle the cards and pull them right here, right now. He's coming. Trust and believe in it. You damn right, yo, the King of Cups is sexy as fuck, okay? In my opinion. And some might say, ooh, the King of Wands is really sexy too. But what I find really sexy about the King of Cups is his emotional awareness and his emotional ability. Oh, I'm sorry, emotional availability. You are going to get the fruits of your labor, Divine Feminine. I couldn't have asked for a better conclusion. And I'm really glad that it worked out the way that it did. We'll just have to stay patient and see. Stay in your alignment. No, Munchie. No. We haven't seen, we hadn't seen or spoken to each other in over a year. Until this moment that I chose to be in an area in which I knew I would cross paths with him. And even when that happened, we still didn't really speak with each other. We didn't have words with each other. We didn't communicate with each other other than through, other, like we didn't have an actual conversation. There are moments coming up in which we will be able to, will we take them? That's yet to be seen, isn't it? Oh. Oh, you mean in my in in my direct messages? I do. Yeah, I chat with followers. Sometimes I don't always get back to them right away, but yeah, I try to chat and I read your messages and I'll respond. Anyway, uh for those of you that are watching YouTube later on, I'm I'm reacting to some of the messages that I get that um that are getting here on this on this Instagram live session. Okay, guys, I have to wrap it up now. Time is up for me. I got to get to work. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for allowing me to be vulnerable. Thank you for giving me a space, a loving and, and welcoming space for me to do so. I love you guys so very much. And I really appreciate you. And I'm... Very happy that I get to be in this position for you guys.
to help you all on your journey. And please understand that you are, in fact, helping me on my own. Because if I didn't have someone or an outlet to discuss this with, I think I really would have lost my mind. Granted, it's in a very public forum and I am a very public figure, but it was meant to be that way. So I embrace it. I mean, I have the energy for it, don't I? <laughs> I have the personality for it. I have the gifts for it. So I might as well do it. Unapologetically. So sorry, but I'm not sorry. <laughs> All right, kids. I gotta go. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow for our weekend edition of Morning Coffee. And if you're watching this after on YouTube, I'll see y'all when I see ya. Okay? Mwah. Bye.